<laughs> At first glance, you might think, oh, Jack, <laughs> I know you're a wildlife expert and all, but uh, are you an idiot? That is so cool. My name is Jack, and I've spent the past few years traveling all over the globe to find some of nature's most unique and dangerous animals. My goal? To show the world that even the most bizarre, or perhaps even deadly life forms on Earth, deserve both our respect and our appreciation. Today's adventure takes me all the way to Southeast Asia, following rumors of a bizarre creature. A creature the likes of which I have never seen before. These animals are cryptic and can be well hidden, so it'll take a keen eye to find one of these impressive invertebrates. Let's put our spotting skills to the test to find one of these amazing animals. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, today I'm searching for a very special creature. Uh, this is one that I've only ever read about in books or seen on TV. Uh, it's it's a very cute animal. I'm hope I'm hoping we can find a larger one for you all to see. Um, it's a detritivore. It lives underneath rocks and logs, so I'm hoping maybe we can come across some by poking through leaf litter. Uh, but it, there's also a good chance of walking up on one as well. After hours and hours of searching, our eyes began to ache and our spirits began to fall. We were getting pretty discouraged and we were scouring the leaf litter and tree buttresses in the dense jungle. Uh, so we were pretty much giving up and we made it back to the main trail. And lo and behold, exactly what we were looking for was just trucking across the trail. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, I curled up. Look at this. This is precisely the millipede I was wanting to see. At first glance, you might think, oh, Jack, <laughs> I know you're a wildlife expert and all, but uh, are you an idiot? Because that's obviously an isopod. Well, no, my friends, I'm sorry to say that you're the idiot because this is a pill millipede. That's right. This animal has many convergent traits with isopods, meaning that a lot of the same kind of forces that are exerted on these animals are the same as isopods. And so over time, they have developed to look very similar. That is a term we call convergent evolution. And we can see that all over the world in things like the marsupial Tasmanian tiger and our own placental wolves. They look very, very similar. But take a look, he's starting to open up a little bit here. So when threatened, these, these pill millipedes will actually curl up into a ball, much like wood lice or isopods. And normally when you see millipedes, they're much more elongate. They're not quite as thick and stout. And that is an amazing characteristic of these pill millipedes. Just trying to figure out how to, I'll put you like this. So if you wanna come out, you can come out and play. Just take a look at the comparison between these pill millipedes and what I would consider to be a quote in quote normal millipede. This is a species of giant millipede here, and you can see the more traditional elongate cylindrical body that stretches is very long, lots and lots and lots of legs. This is what you think of when you think millipede and not these tiny little curl up into ball pill millipedes. And so that's what I think is so fun about these little invertebrates is just how you have to take that that second glance, that, that double look at these animals to really verify and make sure that it's clicking right in your brain. Oh, this is a millipede. This is not an isopod. It's not a woodlouse, roly-poly, etc. This is, in fact, 
a millipede. And that's what I think is just so interesting about these. It's also kind of fun to pretend like they're giant isopods, like giant wood lice. But, uh, of course, we know in our hearts that they're really millipedes. Just like all other millipedes, these are detritivores. They are herbivores, so they're feeding on a variety of kind of leaf litter, vegetation, uh, just kind of general waste, uh, mushrooms, things like that. Uh, but they're some of my all-time favorites because it does feel like you are finding a gigantic isopod, uh, when in fact these animals couldn't be further related. Uh, isopods are terrestrial crustaceans, whereas these, of course, are myriapods. They are many, many, many legged um, invertebrates. Here he comes out to play. Take a look at that. When he's not curled up, he looks very, very similar to a giant uh, armadillidium isopod or, or a similar shaped species. And that's something that's so amazing about these pill millipedes is they look so, so, so similar uh, to those isopods. This was definitely on the top of my list of invertebrates to find, but you can see those characteristic kind of millipede antenna kind of coming out, poking and prodding around. This is a really nice one. They come in a variety of colors here. Uh, this one's like pretty black. Um, and when he was curled up, he kind of had some nice brown um, between the kind of bands of his exoskeleton. Uh, but uh, there's some pill millipedes that can be bright yellow and red, some that can be dark green. Uh, they, they, they have a lot of amazing diversity here in Southeast Asia. But look at that, it looks like a giant a giant roly-poly, right? <laughs> that is so cool. I've never actually seen a pill millipede this big in real life ever. Uh, so this is uh, this is a first for me and it may be a first for you as well. Um, take a look at that. It's not, it's not as big as they can get. Um, this one is uh, maybe curled up about uh, the size of a nickel. But... Um, uh, they can get uh, much, much larger than this, uh, probably around like a ping pong ball sized, uh, which is absolutely massive for an animal like this. But once again, a pretty good rule of thumb is uh, what limits arthropods is typically going to be uh, oxygen and water. And so when you've got a, a, an ecosystem like a rainforest that has an abundance of both, uh, you do get to see some of these animals that uh, normally would stay quite small uh, grow to some impressive sizes. Look at that. He's so cute. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Now being detritivores, these animals thrive in leaf litter, uh, at the base of trees, under logs, and things like that. Uh, so it's not at all uncommon uh, to have difficulty finding them. However, of course, they do come out and move around quite a bit. Uh, I'm sure there are tons in this forest and this is among some of the only few we've seen. Uh, definitely the largest so far, but uh, we can always hold out hope for something even bigger. Um, I'm happy with the size of this one though. It really illustrates the picture of that these look like gigantic, gigantic uh, isopods. <laughs> He's so cute. He's a lot less shy than I thought it would be. I thought it would just curl up and stay curled up, uh, but uh, he doesn't seem to mind. When he doesn't feel in danger, he just is happy to kind of crawl around, which is great for the video. Little feet. So interesting. What a neat little thing. There's so many cool invertebrates here in Southeast Asia. So many that we've seen, so many that we're still hoping to see. And uh, I'm just having a great time. As an invertebrate boy myself, just absolutely love seeing all this amazing invertebrate diversity out here. So cool. Hi, you're so cute. <laughs> wow. Well, we had a great time with our beautiful little pill millipede, an absolutely marvelous find and a species that was high up on my list to see while here in Thailand. So, little kiss. Hopefully it doesn't have any lovely millipede cyanide toxins all over its exoskeleton for me, uh, but it was worth it to kiss such a cool little creature. 
So we're gonna let it uh, get back to doing whatever it was it was doing right here where we found it. There it goes. Too cool. All right, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you learned something about the very interesting, very cool, very unique, and possibly very unknown pill millipede. I loved absolutely to film this video because this was something that I read about in books as a kid and some stuff I saw on TV, and I've always wanted to find some. I didn't find any my last trip to Thailand, so I was really fingers crossed hoping for a good size one, and I think we made that happen today. Well, that's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it even just a fraction as much as I enjoyed filming it. These pill millipedes are a great example of not only how diverse our planet's wildlife is, but how interconnected the natural world can be. Remember, even these bizarre little detritivores serve an important role in their ecosystem, and they deserve both our respect and our appreciation for it. I hope you loved getting to know the pill millipedes, and I hope to see you all again next week. Thanks for watching.